G'day everyone, Dicko here with another kick-ass walkthrough. Today we're going to continue adding some volume to our mesh. And before we get started, I just want to say thank you for everyone who's been watching so far. The response has been absolutely amazing. The comments have been really positive and the best part of all, all of you seem to be understanding the content and are keen to actually make some stuff on your own. So I can't wait to see what you make. So thank you once again and let's get started. Starting with the shoulders. Now you can see here, we got a little bit of stretching there. So we need to sort of give some extra separation between the torso and the arms. So um, we're not gonna add extra geometry there yet or actually in the shoulders or the torso, sorry. We're going to just add an actual edge loop that sort of separates the arm from the shoulders and the, uh, the chest. So I'm gonna select these faces here or these edges, sorry. And I'm basically just going to add a bevel to those edges. So control B, just add a bevel. And we've basically got the edge loop that we need. And all we need to do now is kind of just smooth out that um, edge loop a little bit, just so it hasn't got so much stretching going on. Just scale it in a little bit. And you can see we're already getting much better separation we'll get much better distribution of face edges there so we're just going to smooth those out and you can see we're adding form to those shoulders now we've actually just with that extra bit of geometry and that extra edge loop that we have now so now we have a nice clean edge loop that goes right around the arm before it hits the loops of the arm so we have a loop that's going over the shoulder and around the back we have a loop that's going between the arm and the shoulder, and then one for the top of the shoulder as well. So it gives us a lot more uh, flexibility when it comes to filling out those shoulders. So as you can see, just add a little bit there. We can bring back this loop a little bit so we don't get that stretching that we had. We can add one loop there. And you can see that it's already looking way, way better. And then we just have to uh, sculpt out to smooth out those those, edge, those faces. And you can see what a difference that makes. Just adding that little bit extra, um, an addition, one single additional edge loop to help fill out that chest. And now we basically have a really nice shoulder to work with. All right, so with that shoulder out the way, it's time to add volume to the hips and the butt. And in a very similar fashion, mind you, to how we just did it with the shoulders because anatomically speaking, the shoulders and the uh, hips are kind of similar. Um, they are connecting the connection point between the limbs and the torso, so that's not too surprising. So what we're gonna do, we're going to select a very specific set of edges. So we're gonna select this edge and this edge. So we're gonna follow the, the, um, the pattern as I'm showing you here, and I'll explain in a second. So basically, we're going to select the middle edge here where we get the connection or the change in direction of the um, the hip to the leg. So where we have this five edged star, we're going to switch the direction down just one face and then follow the edge loop along the thigh or the upper hip up to that um, point where we see that five, that five pole again there and then redirect that selection exactly as it is at the front. And then we're going to bevel that selection, like so. So we get this edge loop. So now we have some extra volume straight from the bat. And I'll demonstrate. We have an edge loop that follows in and around the, um, the middle of the hips. We have a edge loop that follows around the butt. And now we have this edge loop here that follows around the body. And notice how we get in that change of direction now. We're getting that change of direction as it goes, you know, to form that sort of buttocks sort of shape. Now it's worth noting that the, uh, the butt cheeks actually sit lower than the crotch area. So your butt cheeks should be sitting a little bit lower than the crotch at its lowest point. And to demonstrate, let me just show you some stock photography of a woman standing in profile. All right, so yeah, just inspecting the body here. You can see that the butt curve actually sits below the curve of the front of the crotch. So the actual body, the crotch line actually is underneath like so. 
and then the muscle of the butt is actually extending below that. So we actually have to model that into our mesh and be aware of that. So starting from the back, we need to add an extra edge loop down the center line. And then if you notice here, we want to start with this edge loop at the top here to form the shape of our buttocks. So just above the hip, we're going to actually delete some faces. Make sure you don't delete the center line completely, but we're going to use one center line as a change in direction. So we're going to delete those faces here and then just delete them. And then we're going to select these edges and then smooth it out like so. And then just it out a little bit. And then we're going to extrude out these edges to form the edge loop or the change of direction and flow of the buttocks. As you can see, we're forming the volume as we speak. I'm just connecting up that loop so it sort of wraps around the body. And the same with the top. So now we have a nice clean loop that goes around the circumference of the body and wraps around itself. But it's also forming the sort of inner cheek of the buttocks. All right, let's start to fill out this inner buttocks so basically. All right, so I'm gonna do another extrusion using the same pattern, extrude in. And we're gonna add another edge loop at the front of the body so we can use it to add some volume to the butt. So we're gonna connect those up like so. We're gonna connect the top of the loop again like so. And notice how we now we just have a hole to fill in the body. Just cleaning it up a little bit using the sculpt tools. And now it's just a process of filling in the buttocks in a very considered manner. And I might have to add some extra geometry down the back of the spine. So in this case, I'm gonna delete the top of their neck because I don't want those edge loops to go around the front either. So I just want to add one span down the back of my body. And that will travel down the leg. All right. So I'm just starting to fill out the back of the butt. Keep an eye on your edges. Make sure you're connecting them in a very considered manner. And again, this takes a bit of trial and error. So, you know, a little bit of practice goes a long way. And again, I'm just trying to make sure I have a very clean topology that wraps around the front of the body, around the back. So I just added another edge loop there, and now I'm just filling in all those little niggly bits that need to be filled. And once we sculpt it and smooth it out, we're going to very get a very we're going to get a very clean distribution of edges along the hips and the butt and the front of the body. And look at that, we're starting to see that bikini line come into play there. And now it's just a matter of just pulling those verts, sculpting in the volume, bringing those hips back, and we're basically done with the butt. So sometimes when I'm sculpting, I like to apply the mirror tool. That gives me a smoother sort of um, transition when I'm sculpting the, uh, down the center line. It might get a little error here. So just turn off our face sets and then just, you know, just sculpt out, smooth out those faces along the center line. So we're going to get a nice smooth amount of uh, topology around the back. And we're just going to pull out those hips a little bit. And we basically got the form of the body up and running for the butt and the crotch. And make sure that once you're happy with the sculpt, to make sure you delete half of your model again and reinitiate the mirror modifier. So with the butt out of the way, just take some time to sculpt out the volume where you need it. Uh, get the thighs up and running. Uh, check to see how it's all looking with regards to your image. And yeah, 
it's time to look at the elbows and knees. All right, moving on to the elbows. And this is not too difficult. It's just about adding some loops and extra geometry into that point of articulation. So starting with our selection, we're just going to go into ed uh, face select mode, select these faces. So we're gonna select about half of the, um, the loops or the faces in our arm loops going down the center line basically so from the center line of the body like this center line and this center line we're going to select those faces and then we're going to just inset and we're going to smooth out those selections bring it out smooth it again like so and then we're going to merge some verts. So we're going to merge one, two, three, and four. Merge to last. Same at the bottom. One, two, three, four. Merge to last. And then we're going to delete these edges. So we get a loop that travels down from the shoulders, around the elbow, and then back down the body. Like so. We we'll get something like this. And then the same pattern happens in the opposite direction toward the hand. All right, and then we're gonna add something known as a double diamond loop. So we're gonna repeat the process, but within that loop, essentially. So we're gonna do the same thing. Inset, bring it out a little bit. Smooth it. And then same pattern, one, two, three, four, merge to last. One, two, three, four, merge to last. Delete those edges. And then we can just sculpt in that elbow a little bit. So we get a smoother transition. And that's basically it. And you can see we have a double sort of pattern going on. One loop, two loop, three loop, four loop in that pattern, basically. And we can add a few more loops into the arms now. And you can actually flesh those out a little bit if you wanted to. So we've basically got the geometry of the arm sorted and we can repeat, basically repeat the exact same process in the legs. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. And one more, I think down the center line there. One, two, three, yep. Same process. Inset, bring it out, smooth. So you get that knee, you see the knee coming into play here. Then one, two, three, four to last. One, two, three, four to last. And one more repeat of that process once we delete these edges. Inset, bring it out. Smooth. And then again, same process. Merge one, two, three, four. Merge to last. One, two, three, four. Merge to last. Select those edges. Delete them. And again, we're going to get the exact same pattern we had in the arms. One, two, three, and four. Perfect. All right, so all we need to do now is just sculpt out those knees a little bit. And we basically have our volume preservation sorted. So I added a few loops there just to fill out that definition a little bit. And now that's basically good to go in terms of volume. The volume we added to the shoulders, the butt, arms and legs. And if you were doing a male character, you're basically good to go. But since we're doing a female, we've got to add those breasts. All right, so let's add some breast tissue. And in terms of topology, it's actually quite simple, but in terms of getting the form and shape right, it can be a bit difficult, but that's all right. Let's just jump right in and get started. So firstly, I'm going to select the faces I need. So I'm going to select these faces. Basically, I'm going to not Select the center line. Don't select the center line or else you're going to get some fuck up -ry. So select those. I'm going to smooth out that selection a little bit. 
I might circularize that a little bit as well and just pull that out just a tad and then extrude. Obviously that looks absolutely ridiculous, but it will make sense shortly. So we're just gonna manipulate those faces a little bit and get the proportions right with this very basic topology. So try to be a bit realistic with your approach. Don't have to have uh, giant jugs or, you know, balloon titties, just keep it natural, all right? So just slowly just manipulate all that. Add a few ledge loops there. And then you can basically just sculpt in the detail for the rest, for the most part. So I'm gonna turn on my wireframe overlay and just manipulate the geometry as you have it there. I'm going to also merge these faces together to get to a point like so. I'll bring that out like that. Might add one extra edge loop. And now it's just about sculpting in the form. And as you can see, always approach the, you know, these sort of forms from every angle. Cause at one angle it may look right but at the top it might look square, all that sort of stuff. So just try and keep it, consider every angle you're gonna see these, these kind of forms to make it feel a bit more real. And I think that'll do for now for this character. So let's uh, jump into Mixamo. Before I do that, I might just bring in the arms a little bit, just bring in that form there. So I'm gonna select that edge loop. Bring it in a little bit. Flatten that out. Just a little bit. That's looking better. You can also add an extra ledge loop there if you want to. And just sculpt out some of the form. So if you feel like you need to add some extra geometry where needed, you can, because we have those edge loops and we have that geometry to play with without fucking up the rest of the model. All right, cool. All right, let's jump into Mixamo and give it a test run. All right, I've taken the time to import both versions of our mesh from Mixamo. So I have our initial mesh from the start of the video and our mesh now that it's been edited with all our volume preservation additions to the topology. So I've got a bit of animation, so let's play it back and see what the differences are. Now, I don't know if you saw the differences there, but they're very clear to me. And if we just stop at a certain point, here's a really good point here. There's some very clear and obvious improvements, namely in the knees, in the butt, and in those elbows, you can see there's a clear change. So obviously in our initial version, we have our knees, which are looking really soft. The transition is super soft there, whereas with our needs in our updated new and improved model we're getting a nice clean transition in that articulation at the knee joint same goes with that elbow look how soft that elbow is compared to this one we're getting that nice hard edge there just with that little addition that we added in about five minutes and then obviously in the butt we're getting some butt cheeking that's going on there we could use a little bit of improvement with the rigging there but you know mixamo is an automatic rigger so, you know, that's all right. But you can see we're getting zero pop volume preservation there in the butt in our original. And now with our new one, we're getting some actual cheek in there. It's looking way more cheeky, so to speak. And that becomes doubly so once we start, start to subdivide this uh, mesh. So let's subdivide and see what happens. Again, let's play it back. And we'll stop at that same point. And you can see the knees especially are looking much more noodly in that articulation with our original. With our new and improved version, look at that knee. It actually looks like an actual knee. It's, it's stretching at the point where we added that extra geometry and it's compressing where at the back of the knee. 
and that's exactly what we want. And again, same with the arms. Look at that. Looking a lot more noodly in the original version, and in our improved version, we're getting much better articulation. Additionally, even in the shoulders, we're getting some additional uh, improvements. Look at the shoulders. Actually, uh, there's some de definition going on there as well. Right there at the shoulder point. And that can be improved even further with proper sculpting and, you know, adhering to your model sheet and stuff like that. So there you go. Just with a few improvements to our mesh, took about, you know, half an hour to do it. But with just that half an hour and taking that time to consider your mesh and consider, you know, the properties and the functionality of your future rig and what it's going to be like in animation, you can vastly improve your topo um, it can vastly improve the presentation of your model through animation. So with that out of the way, next week or next session, we're going to probably start with the hands and the hands are quite a complicated matter, but I think you guys can pull it off with the right instruction. So until then, catch us and have fun. Did I even push record then? I did.